thank you all. I uh, really understand and I'm happy for this. The most of you are here today to listen to Greta and I'm more than happy of this because when I pronounced my uh, speech of uh, election uh, eight, uh, nine months ago, my four priority was youth and youth not as a priority to describe but to give back the voice to the youth, to take a voice and to mobilize, to push, also sometimes unpolitically incorrect, but to push us to do more. So, a few months after, I am more than happy to see this uh, new movement started by the initiative of uh, Greta, a school strike uh, six months ago, a little more, in August, seven now, and that has mobilized so many passions, so many attention, and above all, so many young. My hope, and I am confident of this, uh, is double. First, uh, that you will be not uh, corrupted by adults, uh, by us, uh, so far, and uh, you can continue to mobilize youth, to have a fresh voice uh, also looking uh, after the election to the next commission, because we are at the end of the legislative process, uh, but the fight has to continue, has to be strong. And second, I am absolutely confident that this is a good news for Europe, this new movement of youth taking the floor directly, not asking to have the floor, taking the floor directly and transforming, as you are saying, Hungary in action. Because I uh, copy-paste one of your uh, tweets, uh, one of your, uh, that uh, hope uh, is good, but uh, it's not enough. If you not uh, transform uh, your hunger and hope in action, you will never have hope. Only action can generate hope. And what we need today is exactly action. Action to maintain, preserve, prolong, and develop all the good the European Union has built up, and also action to face the enormous challenge that we have in face of us. Without the European Union, there will be no capacity to face such action, to transform also action in climate change. With the European Union, we have an opportunity because we cannot forget that although it's not enough, but the European Union has been the champion at the, uh, at the very beginning of all the climate change fight. The Paris Agreement is in Paris uh, not for uh, an accident, uh, and the Sustainable Development Goals has been pushed by the European Union, and the European Union can have the lead of this uh, fight in the years to come. So it's not enough, but without the European Union, we'll not have any other possibility to, to take this challenge. So please continue to push, and we need your force, and we need uh, this cooperation to make a difference in this election, at least to mobilize the youth to go to vote and to vote for the good cause and to keep out the angry of the populistic to the action of the person that want a different future but want a future. Thank you. Thank you. Greta, the floor is yours. Do you have... No. What's your reaction about the school morning of listening to leaders? That's okay. That's okay. It's 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 okay. My voice is not very high. Can we have the micro, please? There. Uh, is this... Uh, no. Uh. Yes, it's working. It's working? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, w what should I say? What you feel in your heart? After this morning. Yeah. After this morning. I feel like it's... It's a lot of talking and uh, negotiating. And uh, I feel like we aren't moving forward. We are just standing still on the same place as before. We are... We are only at square one, we are not moving forward. Uh, but we, we will continue to try to push uh, people to, to move forward and to, to take action and to do something. Okay, we're going to start with a question. Um, one, two, three, we take rounds of three. three. Yeah. 
Greta, my name is Anne from the Belgian television. You started this uh, climate school strike on your own in August uh, in Sweden. Now there is thousands of young people all over the world following your example. You will be going to the manifestation here in Brussels. How do you feel about that? I feel that it's incredible that it has spread so far and so fast. Uh, also that um, that hundreds of thousands of children from all around the world are are standing up for for themselves and for our planet, our future, and that we are making our voices heard. Uh, that I think is very hopeful. What did you uh, think of the reaction of uh, Mr. Juncker? Hi, can you, yes, you can hear me. Greta, um, my, it's Jennifer Rankin from The Guardian newspaper. And you said in your speech that you thought the EU had to, to double its actions in order to meet the climate targets. Is there anything that you've heard today that makes you hopeful that that's going to happen? Uh, first, I want to say those numbers I got from a scientist who I contacted yesterday. Uh, and uh, uh, what I think, uh, what was the question again? If you have something in what has been told this oh, morning yeah. that uh, give you all reassured that uh, we are going in the direction that you. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Over there. Yeah, I'm Stephanie, just here, <laughs> also from the the Belgian television. I just wanted to know something. You said that you don't really want to speak to the politicians because they don't listen to you, really. But why did you come here and accept, and accept the, the invitation? And are you really happy with the answer of uh, Mr. Juncker? Uh, I mean, what I, what I mean is that instead of talking to us, they should be talking to the scientists. Uh, but I, I'm more than happy to to come here and to, to speak uh, and to spread the word to people in general as well um, so that they will put pressure on people in power so that they will do something. Are you really confident in the politician or not? Because there are a lot of people, I see a lot of hands. So. We can have a second round later on, here, on the floor. Hi, I'm Sherry Schultz from National Public Radio in the US and Deutsche Welle here in, in Brussels. Um, as I watched and listened to the speeches to you, um, I wouldn't have even known that you made your speech ahead of time. It did not seem to me that it was directed at your very fervent concerns. So I would like my question to both of you. If that's the way you're going to answer when the eyes of, of the world are upon you, um, sir, um, how, can you, how can you reassure these young people that you really heard what they said? This was a direct response to your speech. I have two things to say. Uh, first of all, is that the fact that we have invited her is because we want to listen to her, and not only to, 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 to read her uh, speech or uh, her tweet or to follow her on YouTube. We want her to be with us and to give the message to our assembly and in this specific moment uh, where all the leaders of the main uh, uh, economic, social and civil society organization were convened and also some leaders of the European institutions. So there was a clear intention to listen, not to make all, uh, only the uh, show. Second one, I think that we have listened here in the committee. We are very for pushing for this uh, more engagement. Of course, I express uh, that I am happy for the proposal. We are happy for the proposal that one to four euro of the next uh, EU budget will be for climate change. It, it, it will be the first time. But we say, as she said, that is not enough. We ask for more in the budget uh, is the opinion that uh, this committee voted in September. But we have to say also that before this proposal, there was, n there was nothing. So there is a first step. So we, we um, acknowledge the first step. We support this first step because we know how difficult it will be with the member state. But even as committee, we are asking more. And the force of our speech give us more force also to continue to press in the negotiation that will continue for sure 
after the election, because the budget will be not adopted before the election, to go in this direction and not to go to step forward. Of course, we need this force, and the committee will continue to represent this force to be positively criticizing and support more ambitious in the EU budget toward these goals. Greta? Uh, uh, I mean, um I think I I hope you're going to to do something now and take action because I know you are good people and I know you uh, you don't want to to let the people down uh, so so I just hope that you will do something now and to not talk not just keep talking but to, because talk can be very good, but if it doesn't lead anywhere, it's not, it's not necessary. Okay. Here, one, I'll take the three together. Come here with a very powerful message. The, the youth is really frightened, scared. And how can you reconcile all the good words with the fact that we have uh, enormous subsidies for fossil fuels still? Hi, I'm Victor from the Swedish News Agency. I'm, I'm curious on how long, how long you see the future of this. I mean, you've been striking since last year. How long will you continue? Do you see any sort of... Uh, end to it and the same thing for i mean your belgian friends we have been having these uh, thursday demonstrations now for a month how long will it continue hello my name is caroline i'm from dpa i'm coming from berlin and i heard you talking about that you're not puppets and that you can definitely think on your own did that refer to the accusations that are um, going around that maybe Russia is behind all this, that you're maybe controlled by Russia. Did you hear about it? Did you hear about it? Did you talk about that with your team? And what do you personally think of this? I absolutely agree with you, madam. Huh? It's, not, uh, it's not enough to talk the talk. We have to walk the walk as uh, Greta is saying very clearly, but uh, of course uh, you have to reconciliate also the so many interests. So for me, what is important is two things. First, that Europe has started uh, since a few times to take the good direction. The speedness of this change of direction is largely not enough, but at least the direction has been taken. It's not the case of the United States. It's not the case of other parts of the world. It's not easy. It's not easy even in the European Union because there are different situations in the European Union between uh, the, the, the member state and also the, the energy mix that the member state has. But there has been a change and under this commission a lot has been done around a new energy change for the future that will have a, a, a more and more importance of the renewable energy either for secure and either for producing a, a, a more balance. We have to do more. I fully agree with this. And the committee, in many of, of our opinion, we are asking for doing more, but also taking account, as was told also this morning, the transitional measure to help the region that will pay the cost of this uh, transformation, uh, and also to help the enterprise that have also to be helped to make this transformation, not to be left aside. But we have, we are on the, here in Europe at least, we have taken the direction. It's not enough because the climate challenge and the climate risk is much more higher than the, the answer. But at least the answer is in the direction. We have to speed up the rapidity of our answer. Uh, yes. Uh, there were two questions. Yeah. How long? I'll take the first one first. Um, I am going to continue to strike from school every Friday until Sweden is in line with the Paris Agreement. And I can ask you. Uh, how long are you going to? Yeah, I continue? think we have the same answer. And uh, I think we also need to stop asking that question because it's not about when we stop, but it's about when the politicians finally will start. 
because that's that's not even close. Um, and I think actions need to be done and we all need to be in line with the Paris Agreement because it's an agreement and we signed it. So it's like a promise and we are now breaking promises. Yes, but uh, everyone has an answer. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Luisa. Um, I'm one of the strikers from Germany. Um, and of course, we too find it weird that everyone keeps talking about us and about what we are planning and what our parents are doing and what food we are eating and don't talk about the climate and the crisis we're in. Um, we need to stop this crisis um, and we don't have a choice really here. So of course, uh, strikes will continue. Um, but more than that, we will make every upcoming election there is, including the European one, about the crisis, about the climate crisis. And there mustn't be another election where the crime, climate crisis isn't a top priority. And uh, the puppets uh, I w was referring to was I have heard many times many politicians uh, from from many countries, including Sweden, uh, that we are not thinking for ourselves, that people have manipulated us and that we are not, we cannot think for ourselves because we are just children. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, and uh, the Russian spy thing, uh, I, I just think, I, I hope uh, Merkel meant uh, she wasn't, it was just an in, inconvenient uh, phrasing. Uh, I don't think, I don't hope she meant that we are Russian spies. <laughs> uh, and that is absurd. But I, I'm not fluent in German, but I, I got many, many German, Germans who told me that the translation was bad. And when I tweeted about it, they said that the translation was bad and that she didn't mean that. Uh, but I think it's, as I said in the speech, it's when we talk about, when people talk about the climate strikes, a school strike for the climate, they, they talk about almost anything except from the climate crisis. They talk about whether we are promoting truancy or whether we are puppets, or whether we are, or just like, oh, it's great that the young people are taking action. They, they don't want to talk about the climate crisis because it feels like they haven't got anything to say about it. They just want to change the subject. Okay, the last round, sorry. Let me only add one thing on this. I want only to add one thing to this, and, uh, and uh, not because she's not capable to defend herself, but I think it's not the first time in history that uh, some word has been taken to destroy a position. Huh? It's not the first time. And we have to be completely against this. these fakes. They are attacking and using them as puppets, accusing them as puppets because they do not want to, li to listen to You can perhaps do not agree entirely with what they are representing, but you have to listen. I have uh, two, two children, and I have learned that you can learn a lot from, from your children. So we have to respect and to take this force, and the way to be totally misrespecting is exactly to say this, that they are puppets in the end of others. Please, guy, react to this. This is fake, it's destroying. For once, we have a positive force, because they are not mobilizing to destroy, as other forces are in the place to destroy, but they are there to transform hungry in action and hope. We have to defend and protect this. And for what I am is, is in my hands, I will do everything to fight against this manipulation of the force of these uh, uh, children, of these uh, adolescents, of these young people mobilizing for our future, because it's the common future, as you said. So please react also in the media. This is fake, could be by translation, but always is done by purpose. It's not the first time it is done. Thank you. The last round. Yes, hi. Two. I have a question for Thank Greta. I, I'm over here. I'm Wouter from the Belgian television VTM. Uh, Greta, the last month you have met uh, plenty of leaders, political leaders, leaders, economical leaders. Has any of those leaders um, made you any promise yet about concrete actions for the climate, for a better climate? 
Hi, Isabelle Horry from the French Radio Europe 1. Tomorrow you, you are going to be uh, in Paris. And um, in France, the, the children and the students haven't been as active as you have been or are the Belgian uh, youth has been. I want to know what you want to tell them, to tell those who don't strike, who don't mobilize enough. Um, hi, Greta. Um, your Belgian friend, Anuna, was a bit disappointed by the speech by uh, Mr. Juncker. Uh, what is your reaction to the speech? Thank you. Um, uh, the first question was, uh, uh, pro uh, yes, yes. Um, no, I haven't gotten any concrete promises from political leaders and people in power. They just say that they are they are going to try their best and they are they are trying. And so, no, no concrete promises. Paris. Paris. Oh, yes. There are uh, many countries, including. Sweden, where the strikes haven't been that big, where it's like maybe 100 children striking or or no, or none at all. Um, to those children, I want to say that this is our future and it's, it's our choice whether we want to do this or not. We cannot let anyone tell us not to do this. And we, we must make our voices heard and continue to fight because if no one else is doing anything, then we have to do it. Okay. Yes, I, uh, I, I think he, he's changed the subject a bit <laughs> to uh, conflicts and etc. not very much on the climate crisis, which is which is sad, of course. Okay, I think we'll leave it here. Thank you very much um, for coming. And let's hope you'll be back in Brussels after the elections. Thank you.